Kenna, Raj, Dawson, Rayon, and Tyler all live across the city of Louisville. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, the boys haven't had the chance to visit each other. After self-isolating for two weeks, the guys are finally able to set up a get-together to catch up and unwind. Let's see what they're up to. Hey, is everyone free to come over Saturday? Yeah, I'm down. Works for me. Not like we have anything else to do. What about you, Tyler? You trying to play Call of Duty? Bet. Rod, can you turn on the TV? Yeah, I got you. There is no known level of lead exposure that is considered safe, the report states. And lead can be especially harmful to fetuses and... Doesn't Tyler live in that area? Yeah, but I've never heard him talk about it. You said what about Tyler? Were you not listening? Nah, it's on my phone. Look at the headline. It looks like they're talking about the West End. Did they say why? Something about neighborhoods in West Louisville surrounded by power plants. Or maybe it was factories. I didn't catch the rest. They did mention something about homes having lead-based paint. Lead poisoning happens when lead is consumed, swallowed, or inhaled from the environment. Dust from old lead paint is still the leading cause of childhood lead poisoning. As Raj and Kenna mentioned, many West Louisville homes are located in proximity to several power plants and often contain lead-based paint and plumbing. There is no known level of lead exposure that is considered safe. The CDC suggests that a level of 5 micrograms per deciliter is a level of concern in children, meaning absolutely no level of lead contamination is safe. According to the Louisville Metro Department of Public Health and Wellness, an estimated 1,413 children have blood lead levels that are 5 micrograms or higher, the level in which lead blood content is said to begin causing symptoms. For example, Lead prevents enzymes from performing their normal activities, disrupting the normal DNA transcription process in children with bone deformities during this crucial period of development. The Cincinnati Lead Study is the longest continuously active and prospective study of lead exposure, neurobehavioral, and neuromotor outcomes, child health, nutrition, and more. In this study, an independent inverse relationship was found between prenatal blood lead and birth weight at levels common in the general population of women. This suggests pregnant women and fetuses are particularly sensitive to lead. And you think Tyler's been affected? I'll call Tyler one more time. Let's see. Yeah, hello? Hello? Yeah, hey. Where have you been? Look, man, I'm in the emergency room, man, with my parents. The emergency room? Yeah, bro, like, I, I got you sick. Are you guys okay? Yeah, we just had, like, muscle aches and stuff. Okay, I don't call know, me man. back when the physician gives you more details. All right, bro, See I'll, I'll let you know, man. All right, bye. What happened? Tyler and his mom went to the hospital because they started feeling under the weather. The way he described it was sounding like he was having muscle aches. He said that he began to feel bad a few weeks ago, but didn't think much of it. Do you think it has anything to do with what we saw on TV? Maybe. Didn't their dad start renovating their house a few weeks ago? What Raj briefly mentioned is in fact true. Tyler's father decided to renovate their home given his job now only being off on weekends, ultimately allowing him to work on this home project. However, their home was built in Rubbertown pre-1950. When Tyler's father began, he unknowingly exposed himself and his family to lead dust. Tyler and his father are experiencing more prominent and alarming symptoms because of their prolonged exposure to the lead-containing particles when they worked on the renovations together. These symptoms include, but are not limited, to brain fog or confusion, body aches and pains, and even severe nausea. Studies have shown even minimal exposures can lead to growth and behavioral defects. Tyler's mother, an essential worker, is out most of the day, so her symptoms are thankfully much more mild. This demonstrates how significant proximity is when assessing lead poisoning cases. The closer you are and the longer that you are exposed to lead-containing chemicals, the greater and more severe your symptoms will be. Wait, what happened? I just got off the phone with Tyler. He told me he and his mom were feeling sick and went to the hospital this morning. No wonder he hasn't been responding. Now that I think about it, Tyler does live a few blocks from that one chemical plant. Tyler also lives in an old house, so maybe when they were renovating, they got exposed to the lead paint they were talking about on TV. But even if they started renovating, how could they automatically get sick from that? Wouldn't it take a bit for you to really rack up enough lead in your body to get an illness? I mean, old houses usually have old plumbing, so there's a chance they also had lead in their water. Could have played a part, who knows. So how come when we went to his house two weeks ago, nothing happened to us? 
We were only there for a bit. Plus, after we came back from the park, you gave us water bottles, not water from the tap. Oh, okay, that makes sense. We should tell Tyler about what we found. It could help his family know it isn't safe to stay there right now. Good idea. According to the Louisville Metro Health Equity Report, most of Louisville's lead positive tests are clustered in downtown, west, and south Louisville. Redlining has played a large role in the concentration of outdated housing within underdeveloped and underserved predominantly black and brown neighborhoods. These homes, like Tyler's, are often built with lead-based paint and plumbing. Environmental factors, such as contaminated soil from chemical plants, also contribute to the widespread lead poisoning. Oftentimes, chemical and power plants will be built in areas where land costs are cheaper, which is typically land surrounding neighborhoods with housing that cost lower in property value. Here's a list of steps you can take to help prevent the increase in lead poisoning cases in Louisville. Firstly, advocate for increased funding for the Louisville Affordable Housing Trust Fund and other home improvement grants to expand the number of healthy and affordable housing for low-income Louisvillians. Secondly, advocate for increased funding to lead poisoning screening programs in areas most impacted by this issue. Many children in these areas are at a higher risk, particularly at sites where lead-related occupations are nearby their playing grounds. And lastly, do what Tyler's friends did and educate yourself and your loved ones on this issue, especially if you live or know someone who lives in these areas. Get younger children who you know screen for lead poisoning and get yourself screened as well if you, friends, or family live in a home built before 1978. We hope you learn more about the effects and causes of lead poisoning through Tyler's story. And we hope even more that this story pushed you to educate yourself about the impacts of lead poisoning in Louisville.